Good evening, everybody out there in the land of social media. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for joining us this evening. I have the great pleasure of getting to have Stacey Julius with us here this evening. She has been in the horse industry for over 40 years, and she has been the president of the Utah Dressage Society. She has created the Alpine Mounted Archers. She is currently the president of the Mounted Archery Association. And not only that, but she's also a nurse. And so she has been able to see the profound effects of partnering with horses and how that has helped people as well to inspire, to heal. And as if that wasn't enough, she's also started her own YouTube channel to help support women who have been abused, to help them find a way to heal and thrive and live their best lives possible. Stacy, thank you so much for being here on the show today. Oh, thank you so much for having me. I'm really excited about this. You're very welcome. I know we've been talking round and round for at least like what, six months about <laughs> getting to talk about mounted archery. Yeah. <laughs> I'm yeah, like, for a while. Like, for sure. yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh. And you have so many cool things, but we'll get into the really interesting things perhaps later that you have going on at the barn. But first, tell us a little bit more about your personal journey, Stacey. Yeah, um, so for me, uh, horses have always been a part of my life. Uh, ever since I took my first uh, horseback riding lessons for my 12th birthday, my grandfather gave me a package of lessons and never looked back. You know, I've been on horses, around horses ever since. That's awesome. And uh, about, um, oh, between, you know, five and 10 years ago, I just found myself in a very toxic relationship that you know nobody ever sits back and thinks oh you know I'm going to get into this horrible relationship and I'm going to have all these hurdles to overcome and but that's that's how it, it panned out yeah. for me the horses were a constant they they were always there they were kind of a therapy for me you know horses are real spiritual and very healing there's just something about them and um, I was just so glad that I had horses in my life to be able to kind of center me and ground me and kind of be there when I had those low moments. And I always felt better you know, after I was around them. Yeah. I started with the mounted archery as more of a competitive sport. It was something that I had, had tried and really loved and found out that it was an international sport. And I was like, oh, well, I've, I've got to, I've got to do this. And about mm, seven years ago when I started, there, there weren't very many chapters, organized chapters throughout the United States. So I'm like, okay, I guess I'm going to start one. <laughs> so I jumped through the hoops and, you know, with the insurance and, you know, getting a logo and setting, you know, everything up. I, I didn't really know then where the direction that, that, was going to lead me. I really thought it was just going to be a fun thing for people to do. Something that if people wanted to compete, they can compete. Just more of a get together kind of thing and a competition type of thing. I, I really didn't realize until I was in it several years that it, it was going to blossom in, into something more. Um, I teach clinics a lot and probably like every other clinic I would teach, I would have somebody come to me after the clinic or they would call me after, you know, to say, you know, what a great time they had. And they would just start telling their story about how, you know, they've got hurdles they were overcoming in their life and how just going to the clinic just really lifted them up, gave them confidence, made them feel, at least for that little bit of time, they felt like a warrior. They felt like, you know, I can get on that horse and I can shoot arrows and hit some targets and kind of feel like I'm a badass doing this. <laughs> and, and it gave them the encouragement to see that they can do things that are hard. Because sometimes I'd have these gals come to a clinic and at the beginning of the clinic, they'd say, oh, you know, I'll start on the ground doing the ground stuff, but I don't know about shooting from a horse. And of course, by the end, they're all shooting from the horse but they, they don't have the confidence even in the beginning of the clinic. And like four hours later, they're up there shooting arrows and, and realizing that, wow, like I was kind of afraid, I was nervous, 
maybe I was even intimidated, but they were getting on and doing it. And then when they got off, like the smiles, that's probably the biggest kick I get out of this, this sport is the smiles, you know, when, when people kind of overcome their fears and use it to, you know, just to uplift them and, and get confidence is I get, I get, I get the biggest tickle out of that part there. I mean, just grin, you know, just grinning from ear to ear. Mm -hmm. And I started seeing a pattern with the people that would come to me after and they would be telling their stories about how they were also in, you know, abusive situations, maybe going through really difficult divorces, having uh, difficult family situations. Yeah. And they were telling me how profound it was. And at first I'm like, it's profound. Like I was a little taken off guard, but then the more I did it and the more the years went by, I'm like, wow, there really is something more to this than just hopping on a horse shooting arrows or you know you're going to go to a competition or something like that there really is a healing quality to it yeah no I can well imagine I remember there was a story that you told me once about a woman who had had a tragic accident before coming to your clinic yeah there there was a gal who she didn't let on that she had no intention of getting on the horse whatsoever and the first two hours is all on the ground learning how to shoot before you even get on the horse and we we broke for lunch and that's when we were getting the horses out and she kind of disappeared and I was you know looking for her and she she was off by herself and I'm like yeah you know come on over you know this is this is the real fun part we're getting on the horses and she's like no you know I'm just I'm just gonna watch I could tell she was embarrassed and it's like okay you know I wasn't I wasn't gonna push her I'm like well you know bring a chair over you know sit and watch and she pulled me aside. We had another little break and she pulled me aside and she was telling me about how 10 years before it was the very first time she was on a horse. And, you know, this woman was about my age and it was a, it was a very bad experience. What, what, whatever was going on with the horse, I don't know, but the horse boop flipped over backwards, landed on her and she was in the hospital for a really long time. And naturally after that she was terrified of horses she wouldn't even go up to horses wouldn't pet a horse wouldn't even get near a horse she was just petrified and she told me that the whole reason now she is an archer so she was drawn to the archery part but she thought this might be something to help her get over her fear but in her mind she wasn't getting on the horse at all she just wanted to go and at least just watch for from a distance right and I'm, I'm like, you know, fine, you know, I'm not, I'm not going to push you, you know, you go at the speed that you want to go. And she was watching and she was seeing everybody's grins from ear to ear and everybody was having so much fun. And we were at the, we we're at the very end of the clinic and we're, you know, winding down and she calls me aside and she says, you know, would you help me just get on? I just, I just want to sit on the horse. I'm like, yeah, sure, sure. So we get her on there and it, it took her a while to get on. Like she literally was had so much anxiety yeah. and fear that it, it, it was almost crippling. Um, it probably took about 15 minutes for her to finally swing her leg over and get on. And I was just standing there. I'm like, we're not going to walk. We're not going to do anything. And I said, you know what? Get in the saddle and immediately get right back out. We had a mounting block. So the easiest for her to, you know, to get right down. And I'm like, just get up there. And as soon as your fanny hits that saddle, climb right back down. That's, that is all you have to do. And she did. She stayed in the saddle for about maybe three or four seconds, which was longer than I thought. <laughs> and she got down and she literally was like sweating. She, she was so nervous, but she saw it like nothing, nothing happened. Like that I went well. <laughs> and um, I'm like, so what do you, what do you want to do? And she's like, well, can I, can I try it again? I'm like, I said, we'll stay here as long as it takes. You, you know, you get up there and stay as long as you want to stay. Get off when you want to get off. If you want me to walk, I'll walk. If you don't, we won't. You know, this is, you know, you doing your thing. And she got on and she sat and she sat there for a couple minutes. And she, of course, she was had the death grip, you know, on the front of the saddle. And we weren't moving. We were just standing there and we were just talking. And she's like, my daughters are never going to believe that I've done this. Like this, they're just never going to, never going to bleed because that was her number one fear 
was horses, being around them, let alone sitting on one. So here she is sitting on a horse, and she's petting the horse, and she's realizing that this horse is safe, and this horse is kind, and she didn't have anything to be afraid of. So she gets off again, and we thought, I really thought that was going to be it. You know, that was her, her experience, and that was, like, awesome, totally awesome. So I go to take the horse back, and she's like, well, wait a minute. She goes, I've come this far. You know, can I, can I get back on? Can you just try to just lead me at a walk? And I'm like, absolutely. So she gets on. I'm leading her around. Of course, you know, the motion of the horse started to get her nervous, and she's, like, gripping the front of the saddle. But then as the minutes went by, she relaxed, and she was sitting up. And then she's like, would you hand me a bow? <laughs> like, absolutely. And, you know, w over the next, like, 30 minutes, I walked her around, and she shot some arrows, and she was hitting some targets. And she even got to the point where I didn't even have to hold the horse. I was just walking beside her. She had the reins. She was, you know, steering the horse, shooting, shooting when she wanted to shoot. And when she got off that horse, it, you could just see just, the look in her eye of, I, I cannot believe I just faced my fears. And I, I did it. I did it. And I'm, I'm fine. And the horse was great. And it was really fun to shoot. And she came back several more times, um, you know, to, to club practices and absolutely loved it. And she would tack up on her own, get on her horse by herself, ride, do her thing, untack. And you could just see the, the amount of like pride she had in herself because she had, she had done that. Like, that's really hard to face your fears yeah. like that. And I'll never, that has touched me. I'll never forget it. Yeah, no, I can well imagine. It sounds incredible. Truly. Um, yeah, just so many things to ask. When you have women come in for the retreat, like the clinics, do you do retreats specifically for women who have experienced abuse? You know, we don't do that now, though. That is something that I have been thinking about for the last couple of years. You know, horses are used for therapy. And I actually talked to at the hospital that I work at, I talked to some of the therapists. Um, on the behavioral health uh, floors and asking, you know, what would it take to incorporate mounted archery into a therapy program? Um, there's quite a bit of hurdles involved with that. Um, it's something that I'm looking at, but I really see that there is great value in offering that for, for women or teens, you know, men, I mean, everybody, anybody that is trying to overcome something in their life, it has tremendous value in letting people realize that one, they can do something really hard, two, they can face you know, their fears and anxieties about doing something they've never done, or maybe they do have the fear about horses. It, it really gives them confidence. And to me, that's worth exploring like, how, how can we get this into a therapy program? So that is a direction that I am going because I really see the value in that for, for sure. I, I've, had, I've had gals in clinics that they first come in and, you know, they'll have a hoodie on and, you know, they're looking down and they won't, no eye contact. They won't really talk to you. They kind of stand off to the side. Um, just see me you could just tell that they've, they've got a lot going on you know they've got their demons that they're battling and by the end of the clinic you know the hoodie is off they're smiling they're sitting up they're talking to people it's like total transformation there's just something really magical about that so yeah there's there's got to be a way to incorporate it and that's something that I'm looking into yeah no I'm so grateful that you're pursuing that and it's just something that I hadn't really heard of before. You know, I've spent the last 14 months interviewing people around the world and how they were partnering with horses to help people recover from trauma or with equine assisted learning mm -hmm. or, you know, different aspects of mental health and therapeutic riding. And I had never heard of anyone integrating mounted archery with any sort of therapeutic process. And so when you and I discussed mm -hmm. that, I was just like, oh my gosh, everybody needs to know that this is a possibility. 
which is why we're live streaming you today on my public page instead of one of my free groups that I have. Um, and but we will laterly, laterly. Oh my goodness, it's evening time where I'm at. Um, <laughs> later, I will be streaming it into my women's group for Phoenix Rising women's group, and then we also nice. have global equine and equestrian coaching. Nice. And I think the men should know about it too, in case they can send any of their ladies over there. So men's group being the global resources for men. Um, but yeah, there's so many options for archery. And then we have different people out there that do other martial arts on horseback that people haven't necessarily thought of, you know, with, with jousting and with doing sword work and fencing. All there's so many different things and requiring a deeper mm -hmm. connection to your horse and more trust. And mm -hmm. yeah, so you want to tell us a little bit more about the different things that you've done in that aspect? So I'm, I also do uh, medieval games, which incorporates all of the training games that the knights would actually use to teach them to be ready for battle and jousting. You know, there's um, throwing a spear at a target, there's lancing rings, there's chopping melons, and uh, the Utah Renaissance Fair that's up in Ogden every May. Um, we do demos and we do little competitions and I hold clinics. And that's another fun one as well. Uh, every year we'll have some new gals that like, wow, that looks really cool. Or maybe they saw us the year before and then they see that I post something on Facebook about, hey, do you wanna you know, do this? You can do it. And you know, we have all the costuming, we'll dress you up. We'll teach you, come to the, you know, a couple of clinics so that you're safe and you know what you're doing. And uh, it, it has that same quality of just doing something super, super hard. I think if you, you have fear in your life or if you fear horses, when you're on the horse and you're having to actually concentrate on your equipment, you know, you're shooting, you know, an arrow or you're throwing a spear or you're concentrating on something that, you know, you're doing, it kind of diverts your attention a little bit and actually settles people's fears because it gives them something to concentrate on hmm, that makes than sense. just being on the horse. I, I know that there are some therapy programs, um, there are some for veterans, where just brushing the horses is so therapeutic, and then they'll get them on the horse and they'll lead them around and they'll have them, you know, put their arms out, you know, make circles with their arms, reach towards the sky, you know, just kind of move around in the saddle but it only goes to that and then it stops. The thing that I love about incorporating martial arts into it is it gives them something to put in their hand to concentrate on, to divert their attention from something else that they're, they're shy of or have fear of. And then before you know it, they forget that they're scared because they're like, oh, I wanna lance that ring or oh, I wanna hit that target or you know, I wanna shoot that arrow farther the next time that they totally just don't even realize what they have been doing. And then afterwards they're like, wow, I, I can't believe I just, I just did that. And wow, I, I can do something that I didn't think I can do. And then it translates into other aspects of their lives. You know, I've had, I've had several come up to me and say, you know, just that experience of just seeing that I can do that and overcome fears made me realize that I could do the same thing in other, other areas of their life. Like maybe they were also in a bad relationship and they had, they needed to find the courage to get out of it. Or there's just other things that they had to do. It, it helped spur them to, to kind of inspire them that they can do it. Yeah. No, that's yeah. fantastic. We've got, uh, you can't see us here, but we do have three people who have joined us here today. So for those of you who are here awesome. on the call with us, thank you so much for joining. I do appreciate you. Um, is, since we have people on here, does anybody want to unmute briefly and ask any questions, have any comments about any experiences that you may have had with mounted archery or would like to have with mounted archery? Yeah. No? Totally fine. Just wanted to put that off right Try. Out. <laughs> Try <people. laughs> yeah no it's totally fine it's really nice to just have the space held by people who are interested in the topic it's a really beautiful opportunity so I am grateful for their presence but mm -hmm. yeah so Stacy, there are 
I'm just thinking about all the fun things. So you have something going on at the farm right now. Creatively, would you like to share um, about that with uh, um, the action that's happening in the training that you've been doing with a couple of your archery? Um, you mean with, the mount with, with mounted archery? Yeah. Um, well, uh, you know, with the Alpine Mounted Archery Club right now, you know, we're growing and it's been really fun adding new members. We've got a couple of members that are actually being trained because there's a, they're going to be filming in a movie coming up um, in the next couple of months. So that's been really fun working with them. Um, yeah, I mean, I always have things going on. Like, I just started that YouTube channel. Uh, if somebody would have told me years ago that I would try to be an influencer and, and be on YouTube, I'd be like, yeah, no, <laughs> I'm not going to do that. Uh, but I decided to try it, and I've I've had some requests from others to kind of go bigger um, I've been helping some other organizations and helping others that I've been aware of that have come to me asking me questions about, you know, how did you do it? How did you get away from, you know, your toxic relationship? And, you know, that was such a crippling thing. How did you, how did you get from point A to point B? And can you tell me how I can do it? And do you think I'm in, you know, that type of relationship and should I leave? And, you know, so I started coaching without even realizing it. It just fell in my lap. And several women said, you know, there's, there's no Facebook group for surviving or overcoming abuse. And I did a search and there wasn't any. There's some national pages, but nothing here in Utah. So I went ahead and started one and that has grown. And I'm also involved with uh, Passionate Wings, um, helping them. Passionate Wings is, uh, was started by Martha Garcia. And she, her mom was a survivor of abuse. And everything that she witnessed with her mom, she just knew that when she was an adult, she wanted to give back. She wanted to do something to help other women get out of those situations. So she started her nonprofit, Passionate Wings, and it's in Salt Lake. And what she does is she takes donations of really nice clothes and personal care items so that women have something. Because a lot of times with abusive situations, these, you know, these women are running out of the house with their kids with the shirt on their back and, and they have nothing. Yeah. And she started the donations and she, it started in her garage. And she very quickly outgrew her two car garage. And she'd been on the news several times, you know, getting the word out so people knew that she was there. If there were other women out there that needed clothing, needed nice clothes for interviews. I mean, she had some really, really nice donations that, that she was there, but she was mainly making a plea about, I need a space. I need somewhere to put all of this that's not in my home and in my own garage. Of course, there's a worry, you know, of having that in your own personal space. So I actually had an idea. Um, I worked at Salt Lake Regional and I was in a medical building that there were doctor offices that were vacant, had been vacant for years. And I'm like, hmm, let me go ask, let me go ask the administration of the hospital what they would think about donating that space. I really didn't have a lot of high hopes. I was thinking, yeah, they're going to be like, yeah, no. And just shoot it down because it just seemed maybe difficult or not something that they were focused on. And I was very pleasantly surprised that they embraced the idea. They had a quick meeting, got back to me the very next day and said, you guys could hold your own insurance for that space. You can have it. Wow. Now Passionate oh. Wings has, I don't even know how many square feet. There's probably maybe 2,000 square feet. Whoa. So she has all this space. She took more donations, and she has women going in there just about on a weekly basis to get the clothing and the care items that they need. And what her vision is, is to add classes, to teach, you know, how do you write a resume? 
how do you how do you sit for an interview? You know, how to prepare for an interview, how how to balance your checkbook and finances and child care and and how do you balance just the stresses in life? How do you manage your own emotions and and stresses and your your kids and you know you're trying to live on your own you've gotten away from a situation and now now what right um there are a lot of shelters and programs out there that will help women but they only help to a point and what we found which was odd and, and frustrating is they you know these women can get into programs but they have to stay in the house where the program resides and they have to stay there for X hours a day, and they're only allowed out for X hours a day. They very much control where they're going, what they can do, who can come and see them. And we reached out to these organizations to let them know, hey, we have all this clothing. We want to partner with you. And because of red tape, sadly, we weren't, mm-hmm. we weren't really able to. So being able to take the women to Passionate Wings, let them pick out everything they want, and go and, and have their own things they picked out was super important to Martha. Because some of these organizations were, well, just, you know, throw some items in the bag and drop it by. I'm like, well, that's, it's nice. So that's kind of not, you know, missing the point. You know, we want these women to go in. It's set up like a boutique. It looks like you would never know it was secondhand clothing. Everything is arranged in different rooms and different items. It's, it's, it's beautiful. It's, it's laid out beautifully and it's decorated beautifully. And that way they can go in and have a safe space, pick out the clothes that they want, the clothes that they need, the items that they need, and feel good about what they picked out, you know, to, to feel good about yourself. There's just those little things in life. Absolutely. I mean, are, are huge. I think we take for granted sometimes. And um, so, yeah, I've partnered, I've partnered with, with Martha and it's been really fun to see her organization grow. She's, she's, gotten a lot I mean so many donations that we've even outgrown that space <laughs> that's awesome already I love yeah. to hear about people getting support especially women who have been struggling in situations of abuse and do you um have any for so let's see here there's so many things so sometimes do those women get scholarships to get to come down to see you or anything like that or is that still in the building phase or are there other places yeah. in um that you can send women to in partnership with horses, for, not necessarily just mountain archery, but women in your area who are struggling with abuse where they could go t- to work with yeah. horses. There are uh, several programs. I know up in, in Layton, there's a program for troubled teens and they incorporate horses. So each teen would get a horse. I actually donated a horse uh, to this program and each teen has a horse and they would bond with the horse, learn you know, all the horse care, how to feed them, how to groom them, how to tack them up, ride them, to teach them those life skills. There, you know, you'd really have to, you know, I don't know a whole lot of names, but you'd have to just kind of do a search and, and see what's out there. And, you know, the funding is is probably the biggest thing. You know, you get a horse involved, and then all of a sudden, you know, you've got the insurance things that you have to oh, for <laughs> sure. worry about. And so that's that's an obstacle with horses and of course you know they're big and you got to house them and feed them and yeah you know it's they're it's not as readily available as other other type of therapy programs but they are out there so if somebody came to your program to do the mounted archery somebody who had never experienced mounted archery before what would be some of the steps that you would take the person through um, to prepare they can get engagements mm-hmm. with the horses and the different names of the styles of archery and exercises, et cetera. So like walk us through for those of those people out there that might not necessarily be familiar. Yeah. Um, so what I would do is contact them ahead of time and kind of give them an idea of what to expect when they first come. I think that that settles a lot of people's fears. I've had some people very relieved because they thought as soon as they got there, we were just going to throw them on a horse. The horse was going to be galloping and all this. And <laughs> they were really afraid of that. And they were ready to bail if that was going to happen. And, and they were pleasantly surprised that that wasn't how it was. 
we'll spend a good two hours, two and a half hours on the ground and we'll sit them on barrels because it's nice sitting on a barrel because it simulates being on a horse. And we introduce them to the equipment and of course safety and how to shoot. There's different, different styles. And so we'll teach them the different styles and, and how mounted archery is different than, than regular, you know, USA Olympic style archery or like using compound bows and, and longer recurve bows. The archery that I think most of us are familiar with is Olympic, you know, Olympic archery or, or hunting archery. And this is, this is just so much different. It's more natural. We don't have all the gadgets on the bows and you're actually shooting off your hand. You, your arrow isn't, isn't facing straight. It's actually facing off to the side. It's, it's how our ancestors, you know, when they crafted their own bow, they didn't have any, any fancy bows and they just had to figure out how to make it work. So it's more of a traditional natural style. So they learned that first. And then once they get really good at knocking and shooting and they're feeling really fluid and they're not stumbling around then we have them walk and shoot that kind of simulates being on the horse because now they're doing two things at once so now they have to concentrate on now I'm walking and in a straight line and now I have to you know get my arrow on my string and I and I have to shoot and then once they master that then we go on to skipping and shooting and that's something that I always love doing because everybody's just giggling and laughing because they kind of feel funny because they don't feel like they're coordinated and they're like I can't skip like this is crazy and you know everyone, it's just a funny time for everybody and just that laughter kind of settles everybody down and then we get out the horses and you know I always tell them we're going to hold your horse first we're going to have the rain you don't have to worry about controlling the horse and, you know, we'll have them be on the horse for a while just so they get used to the horse and they know that the horse isn't dangerous, the horse isn't going to, you know, be doing anything crazy, that the horse just has this nice, easy, gentle, you know, nature about them. And we'll walk with them and then it's like, okay, we'll give them a bow and it's like move the bow all around so the horse sees it and you see it and that you know that when you move the bow everywhere that, you know, it's not going to spook the horse and the horse is fine, but they have that confidence. And then they start shooting with arrows, of course, while we're holding, you know, the horse. That way they know somebody's controlling the horse. I don't, I don't have to worry about that part of it right now. And then they gradually work up to it. Now, yeah. of course, I'll, I may have people that come that already ride. And so I'll only walk with them maybe once. And then they're on their own because they've, they've got those skills. But then we'll have people come that they've, that's the first time they've ever been on a horse. Yeah. Or they haven't been on a horse since they were a little kid. And so we may walk with them a little more until they feel comfortable. But by the end, I, every single person is walking independently and shooting. That's fantastic. So we kind of baby step. You know, we start it, you know, one thing, you know, each skill builds, builds one, one on another. Yeah. What are some it exercises? Seems hard. Huh? It seems hard. Like if you just see someone running and, and shooting, you're like, I yeah, can't do that. Kind of intense. But, you know, we start small and work our way up. So what are some exercises that you can give people if they were feeling nervous? Well, one, deep breathing, for sure. The biggest thing is connecting to the horse. So touching the horse, petting the horse, really getting their hand, like brushing's fine, but there's something about the energy of a horse when you're touching the horse and petting the horse and having the horse like turn and nuzzle them. And just kind of building that bond first yeah. is something that I think some sports overlook. The horse, I think, is seen more as a means to an end. Get on the horse, right. go jump some fences. Sure. You know, get on the horse, go go do this show or go do this thing and then, and then get off. It's more like they're treated as a machine. I really like to take the time to have people bond with the horse ahead of time have that time with them and build that trust between them yeah before they even get in the saddle at all definitely that that goes i think we just need to stop and appreciate the horse yeah and and their energy and what they have to give because right. it's it's an animal you're getting on you know a 1200 you know pound animal give or take 
And I, I think that, you know, we as people sometimes can do better to thank the horses and appreciate the horses for having that relationship with us. You know, I think that's something that's overlooked. Uh, yeah, no, I definitely agree with you on that particular point. Stacy, I would like to ask you, who in the world inspires you today? Who inspires me today? Mm -hmm. Oh, for, for everything? Anything, could be a person, could be an an animal, could, yeah, anything at all, alive. Then, anything at all um no. you're like there's, there's this one turtle I really just it walked so confidently across the road and it just really inspired me I don't know anything <laughs> um there's a gal her name is uh Cambry Kaler and she was uh I was involved in a technique equestrian vaulting club so it was both my daughters and I was with them for about seven years, um, helping them train their horses and, and being a lunger. And she was in a very bad vaulting accident. So I don't know if, if some of the viewers don't know vaulting. Equestrian vaulting is you have a lunger in the middle. They have a line to the horse. The horse goes around in a circle. And they choreograph certain moves on the back of the horse. So it's like doing ballet on the back of a horse to music. And she had, when she was a teenager, uh, she had an accident, a fall, and she she broke her spine, you know, severed her spine, and um, was then in a wheelchair. And she decided, you know, of course, she went through all the emotions of, you know, I'm never going to walk again, and, you know, there goes my vaulting career, and, you know, she was at the top of her game right before that happened. But instead of letting it get her down, she decided, okay, I'm in a wheelchair. I'm going to start a club. And my daughter and I found the technique club. And at first I was like, you know, she's wheeling around the horses. She's in a wheelchair. And I'm like, how is, like, how is she pulling this off? How is she doing this? And that lady was the most hopeful, fun, happy person I think that I've ever met. She didn't let the fact that she couldn't walk and function the way she wanted to get her down and she was such an inspiration for all the girls and all the boys that were in the club and just to look at her struggles like even just to get out of the car like we just take it for granted you open the door you hop out you shut the door you go on your merry way well she had to get you know her wheel out and the wheelchair and the other wheel and put it together and then she had to hop out and it you know everything took so much longer but she she dealt with it so gracefully that you just you didn't even realize she like you, she didn't even realize she didn't have legs to walk. She wow. just blended in with everybody. She didn't see it as a as a disability, and she didn't let it stop her. And I think because she didn't see herself as being disabled, she she didn't think she could she wouldn't be able to do whatever she wanted to do. And she would even get on the horse after that. She actually uh, went to, was trying to go to, actually to the Paralympics. Wow. And we sponsored her for a while. And I went with her to a couple shows as a groom for her. And just to watch what she had to go through to compete at that level was, was pheno like phenomenal. And, and I always looked up to her because I'm like, you know, I may get down in my life mm -hmm. about things that I'm going through. But then you look at, you look at her, you're like, wow, look at what she's doing. Like, maybe my life's not so bad and I just need to pull up my bootstraps and be like, yeah, I'm grateful for what I have and I'm going to go on and do what I want. And if you have a dream, you can, you can accomplish that dream. It's really, it's up here. It's all, it's all mental. Absolutely. And she's amazing. She was amazing. She sounds like an incredible person. Well, maybe we can have her on the show sometime. Oh, she'd probably love, she would love it. Yeah. She's a great, great gal. Oh yeah. We'll have to get that all connected up later. Well, if last call, if anybody on the call would like to have, if you have questions, comments, last little bit. All right. 
Well, Stacy, mm -hmm. it has been such a pleasure to get to have you on the show today. I so appreciate you and your time and what you're doing out there to help empower women through mountain archery and through your coaching and all of that. Thank you. Great. Thank you very much for having me. You're very welcome. Mm -hmm. And for everybody watching, thank you so much for being here and we will see you next time. Bye. <laughs> Bye.